and how, how do I do things? There are four things that I do in order to help people and I share it with you. And sometimes this is through ongoing coaching or it could be a few day training. Number one thing I get people to do is I get them to identify the differences between a pushy 1990s salesperson and a consultative trusted advisor. And I always teach people how to be the second type. Now, what are some of the differences? Now, if you had to think about what are the differences, put it in the chart. What are some of the differences that when you think consultative, pushy? Now, I'll give you one example. A pushy salesperson, they have acronyms. You know those acronyms, ABC, always be closing. So there's, there's many differences. At the end of the day, a consultative cares about the customer. They lead with empathy and integrity and look, look, looks at the sales interaction as who can I help here today? So many times we walk in networking situations like this one today, right now, this morning. And it's in our human nature to think, okay, who can I take from here? Who is here to serve me? I'm just going to talk to the people. Yeah, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that, talking to the people that are going to help you. But if we walk into the, this situation, networking situation, we're like, who can I take from here today? It's all about me. I'm not listening. I'm looking at my phone when other people are talking. I'm not giving them that attention. That means that I'm a pushy salesperson. or I'm, I'm not leading with that integrity or empathy. So that's number one. Look at the differences and aim to be the second type of person. And there are so many trusted advisors out there that do amazing jobs. I know salespeople that have had uh, their customers invite them to their weddings. And one a real estate agent in Victoria told me that he was the godfather of one of his clients. Okay. This is how some, I'm not saying for you to be, some people, it's not in your nature to be their best friend, but that's how sometimes you can create those types of relationships. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is I get people to identify the benefits that learning how to sell is going to bring into their lives. Now, for me, I can hypnotize basically anyone to do anything I want. Okay, no, I'm kidding. I wish. It's not that easy, but there are many benefits. Such as, number one, being able to build great relationships, being able to build amazing rapport, communicate effectively know how to overcome objections. And on top of this, the sales skills, there's also the mindset stuff. I mean, I started to learn about confidence and how to really help people um, and help myself was when I started to learn about selling. Now, number three, this is very important, is identify the impact that uh, selling is going to make in the customer's life. Now, good salespeople understand that they're not product pushers. They are problem, problem solvers, but they go very deep. They identify the psychological uh, uh, benefits of how is your product or service or you going to solve the I can't sleep at night types of problems. Now, you might be selling a software, right? And you might, we have the cliche, okay, the software is going to save you time and money, but that's not good enough. We have to go very deep. So, for example, your software could save a person in an organization time, but time could help them save their sanity and saving their sanity could help them save their health. And if I'm going to go deeper, saving them time, saving them their sanity and saving them their health could help them save their job. And let's go really deep, saving them the their time, their sanity, their health and their job could potentially save their marriage. Okay, so when you're thinking of what does your product do, don't just think of cliche things like time and money. Think about the impact, how it's going to change that person's life. Many people just look at a software. Yes, it's a software. And yes, it can save people time, organizations time and money. But there's many things that it can do to help people. I mean, I was once uh, helping um, this organization with, what was it? I was doing a presentation for them and it was, selling windscreen wipers yes wind, changing your windscreen wipers could potentially save your life it could potentially um uh, save you from having a car crash and getting disabled okay so always think about the impact okay so number four way the last way is i get people to change a story what is the ongoing story that you're telling yourself constantly about sales or about 
your products and service or even about yourself? What are some of the limiting beliefs about sales? I'm not good enough. I hate selling. Salespeople suck. My products and services are not better than the competitors. Whatever story you're telling yourself, you're conditioning yourself to the next day wake up and not want to pick up the phone or go out there and meet people. So it's important to change that story and what you're telling yourself about selling. I love salespeople. I think they are the lifeline of any business. My products and services are making a huge impact because X, Y, Z. Yes, maybe I'm bothering some people, but the right person is going to change their life, my product and service. Okay, so these are the four things. Number one, identify the differences between a consultative and a pushy salesperson. Number two, know the benefits of why, how it's going to help you yourself. Number three, identify the impact it's making in someone's life. And number four, change the story. And finally, I'm going to leave you with this quote by Zig Ziglar. What was the quote? Okay. What was the quote? Okay, so Zig Ziglar, he says, help enough people get what they want in life and you will get everything you want in your life. Thank you so much.